rightly getting fed up with. And when a group of books come along and challenge that, uh, people warm to it. Uh, I noticed you, you call that imaginary friend uh, a, a phrase I enjoy myself because it is so gets at so what this is. And yet, yeah, I, I, did you I, coin it? By the who invented that phrase? Did you well, coin? I it? used to use it in my stand-up act. Uh, and I yes. noticed it's maybe Sam. it's your phrase. It's very good anyway. Well, I, but believe me, I've stolen many of yours, <laughs> so I think we're we're even. But uh, I I think people would be interested to find out uh, that in the book you establish a scale of one to seven of atheism. One being yes. someone who is utterly certain there is a God, and seven yes. being someone who is utterly certain there is not. But you yourself say you're only a six. Can you tell us why? I think any scientist would be unwise to commit himself to saying there definitely is not anything. I mean, I can't definitely commit myself to saying there are no fairies. Uh, I'm pretty sure there are no fairies. But I think it would be unscientific to do what the extreme religious people do and say, I know there is a God. I can't say, I know there is no God. I can't say, I know there are no pink unicorns. Uh, so, a six, maybe 6.9 uh, is reasonable. Right. Uh, and one reason I think yourself and so many others are beginning to speak out uh, against organized religion is uh, because it's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. There's a talking snake in the Garden of Eden and people fly up to heaven bodily. It's just ridiculous. So my question is, how, how do you explain bright people, and there are many, come on, we have to admit this, uh, I talked to your friend, the scientist Francis Collins, discover the human genome. How does a man go to a lab all day and then at home, uh, go home and believe in the talking snake? How do you explain that phenomenon? Well, um, Francis Collins didn't discover the human genome. He was the head of the worldwide operation that discovered it. So he was an administrator. He's a very good scientist too. But uh, don't, don't say he was the one who discovered the human genome. It was a, a team effort and he was the administrator. Okay, but he's a bright guy. Well, yeah, I guess he's a bright guy, but I mean... Um, All right, take another example. Tony Blair, your former prime minister, no, well, just, well, let, okay. just converted no, to he's Catholicism. he's not a bright guy. Yeah, he's not a bright guy. Um, uh, Fr Francis Collins is a much brighter guy than Tony Blair. I, I think he's not. But um, when you meet a scientist who claims to be religious, if you say, do you really believe in the talking snake, most of them will say no. Uh, most of them will be religious in a much more nebulous sense than that. They'll vaguely believe in some sort of uh, maybe spirit that motivates the universe or something like that. They won't really believe in all the details in the book of Genesis. Uh, and I, I must say, I don't think Francis Collins believes that. I think you've got to give him credit for maybe he believes in some kind of God. Maybe he even believes in Jesus Christ. But I don't think you'll find he believes in the talking snake. Uh, I interviewed him, and he absolutely does. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, it, well, look, in that case, he goes right down in my estimation. He's not a bright guy. If this book works as I intend, readers who open it will be atheists when they put it down. How is that going for you, the rate of conversion? Do you have people come up to you and say, you know, I used to be a believer, and I read your book, and now I'm not? We have a section on my website, richarddawkins.net, called Converts Corner. You can go and visit that and read all the, the, te the testimonies of people who have been converted. However, I think they're probably less numerous than people who maybe were sort of vaguely sitting on the fence and who didn't feel very strongly about it one way or the other. But now that they've been asked to think about it, now they've read a book that makes them think about it, they realize that they've been atheists all along. They just didn't know it. They didn't know it was okay to be an atheist, perhaps. They thought somehow it wasn't respectable, or they just didn't give it much thought. I think there's a much larger group of people in that category than people who were fervently religious, who've now changed their minds. And do you think there's any chance that when the final hour comes for you, when you're on your deathbed, you might have a second thought and <laughs> suddenly get cold feet? I tell you what. When I'm on my deathbed, I'm going to have a tape recorder switched on because it, time and again, people like me 
are, are the victims of malicious stories after they're dead, people saying they had a deathbed conversion when they didn't. <laughs> the story that even Darwin had a deathbed conversion, which is a complete lie, but it's widely believed by, by creationists. And it happens again and again and again. So I'm going to have witnesses and I'm going to have a tape recorder switched on. Okay. Thank you so much for making time for us. The God Delusion, here's my copy. It's out in paperback now, and hopefully someday it'll be by the bed and everyone will tell in America. Richard the other thing, but the thing they didn't address was, uh, what about, you know, guys, you know, those who of us want to date, you know, because now our dating pool shrinks because it's hard to find women who, you know, uh, who are cool, you know, or, like, or men, you know, who are cool. That's so well, let me ask you, do you, what I was asking you, um, do you think you could be 